Hey, welcome to the book of Exodus, chapter 21, verses 1 to 3. Let me read it, and we carry right on, verse by verse, through the book. Now these are the ordinances which you are to set before them. If you buy a Hebrew slave, he shall serve for six years, but on the seventh he shall go out as a free man without payment. If he comes alone, he shall go out alone. If he is the husband of a wife, then his wife shall go out with him. So now we're going to have uh, several different pieces in the mornings to come. The first three right here, especially up to verse 11. Uh, we're dealing with kind of, we're talking about slavery in the Bible. Now, we already have been through the Hebrews came from a situation of slavery or forced labor where they were permanently uh, engaged by the Egyptian state and would be slaves forever. And uh, even the Ten Commandments we just read begins with, by the way, you were slaves in bondage. I brought you out of that. And so now after we shift from the big moral imperatives, the Big Ten, now we're shifting to all these other different descriptions of different laws and cases, a different kind. We're going from the apodictic law to the causistic law I talked about a few mornings ago. Now we're going into these if then and so on kind of laws. And guess what? We're going to get here. We're going to get the application of the big laws into particular cases as they get into this uh, n next level down of law is starts with the slavery issue. Okay, so let's look at it here. Number one, notice this. This is not the same kind of slavery if you were born into it and uh, live your life in it. This is the, the maximum time you could be a slave, six years. Okay, also this is kind of like the uh, Today, in the 2020s, you know, it's kind of like the modern sports uh, star. You know, he makes a contract with such and such a team, and he's going to be on that team. It's a four-year contract. He's going to make this many million dollars. And what does that mean? Well, he can't go and play for, on, for Team B. He can only play for Team A that he's contracted with. Uh, it doesn't mean that they own everything about him. It doesn't mean that he's a slave of that team. But in terms of his services on the football field or whatever the sport is, he can only do that in association. He's contracted to work for that, for Team A, the one that the contract is with. So he is in an agreement with that team and his, they have exclusive right to his services. This is kind of what we're looking at here. This is an economic plan here. And so it's not that these people are absolute slaves like the slaves in the American South or some of that terrible and tragic stuff that we've had in more recent history. This is a situation where somebody who's in an economic problem, they can, they can sort of do this almost kind of an indentured servant thing. And notice that the maximum, the maximum you could be in this is six years. This is a male servant and he can go six years. Do you notice that on the seventh year, he goes out free? Okay, so you are released, even if you get yourself into a situation or you're in, somehow brought into a situation of great financial stress and you have to take this step, in seven years, you're going to be free. That's automatic. Now, also we noticed back in the Ten Commandments that, for example, on the Sabbath commandment, that none of the servants, the servants also observe the Sabbath just along with everybody else. So in the Hebrew economy, in God's plan, the, even the servant who is in this sort of slave category, if we want to call it that, indentured servant category, even this person has the rights of a person. He will, uh, if he's circumcised, he's in the covenant, he's treated like a brother, he is, uh, he is going to keep Sabbath. You know, it's not going to be like, I'm a Hebrew, I'm keeping Sabbath, you're not a Hebrew, uh, please take out the trash, please start the light, please turn off the light. That's not going to happen. Okay, because we're treated on Sabbath, the distinction between the creator and the creature, that's the main distinction that's emphasized. So on the Sabbath, we're all kind of level at the same place. We're all human. So even the indentured servant type person that we see here, he is, is lifted up. He's not pushed down and squeezed down and treated like dirt. He is lifted up. He's part of the community. So this is God's way is going to be very different from what people think. So when people think the Bible approves slavery, uh, well, you know, wait, pause, stop right there. Now let's go to the text and find out what the Bible really talks about. All right, let's say some more tomorrow morning.